Okay, now we have here the Lyme disease. So, uh, the Lyme disease is caused here by the Borrelia bordeferi. So, um, this being called here the Lyme because the first uh, incident of this infection has been noted in the old Lyme in Connecticut, USA. And uh, this being caused here by Borrelia bordeferi. It's being called here as bordeferi because the first to identify or try to describe uh, describing here the disease process of the of this Lyme disease here is uh, Willy Bordorfer. So, Parsha is actually a writer which I described here the disease process and therefore pinagalanan nitong causative agent ng Lyme disease na then uh, Borrelia Bordorferi. Okay, so basically this Borrelia Bordorferi causative agent for Lyme disease is transmitted by the bite of your teeth. So, this is an arthropod transmitted and basically, this one is transmitted here by the bite of the ticks belonging to your exodus, the genus exodus. So, your Lyme disease is actually, um, this is a multi-organ disease which try to affect not only your skin, but also try to affect your, your heart, your joints, and even your CNS. We divide the disease process here into the three stages. The first stage is characterized by localized rash. And the localized rash here characterized, I mean that one is being called here as your ECM, erythema chronicum migrans. And the secondary stage characterized by early dissemination phase. And the tertiary stage would be considered here as the late dissemination phase with arthritis manifestation. Okay, for the primary stage, again, this is characterized here by the presence of your bullseye uh, rash or you call this erythema chronicum migrans, ECM or kalagay lang dito EM but it's your ECM, erythema chronic chronicum migrans. Again, this erythema chronicum migrans is a rash that occurs here appears after two days or two weeks at the site of the bite of your exodus. It is characterized here by started with a red papule which try to expand to form here erythematous ring and with a central area with the clearing on the side of that that gives you a bullseye appearance. Some patients during the stage here would have asymptomatic but others would have a flu-like symptoms like we're talking about fever, headache, malaise, or we have also here fatigue. Okay, the next one, we have here the secondary stage characterized by early dissemination phase where the bacteria try to disseminate to other parts of your body. So again, it try to have fear, um, again, it try to affect other organs in your body. Okay, so again, this one would have your migratory pain found in your joints, in your muscles, in your tendons, or even in your bones, muscle, tendons, and joints. And second one, this secondary stage character is also here by an early neuroborreliosis. So, kasi nabing early neuroborreliosis here, so we have already characterized here by the CNS involvement. Okay, pero early um, involvement na ito ng CNS natin. So, this is characterized by the early neuroborreliosis, characterized by the following. We have your visual disturbances, mild to chronic confusional states, difficulty in memory and intellectual functioning. And the most important manifestation, secondary stage, would be your facial paralysis or facial palsy, characterized here by paralysis here in one side of the face. Another one, the patient also have here the heart involvement, the cardiovascular involvement is in the form of your atrioventricular block. And lastly, we have here the tertiary stage. So if the patient is left untreated, the tertiary stage characterized here by two uh, manifestations. First, we have here the arthritis manifestation, where characterized here by the swelling of the joints, especially for those mga large the joint area, especially in your knee area where the, the swelling, inflammation, or pain usually episodic in nature. Second one, manifestation of your late stage or tertiary stage is characterized here by the late neuroborreliosis or the late CNS involvement. And that's manifested here by number one, peripheral neuropathy. And second one, we have your encephalomyelitis. Then finally, we have here the two tests which has been approved by the 
Food and Drug Administration for the diagnosis of your uh, Lyme disease. Again, this includes your immunofluorescent assay and we have also your enzyme immunoassay. This two tests, this two tests are actually again this one is uh, you are detecting for the antibody. You could also have confirmatory tests, Western blood, PCR. Okay, so Okay, we have here the principle of your immunofluorescent assays. Again, you are detecting for the antibody for that. Okay, the antibody is from the patient. Your agent is in the form of your antigen on the slide. And that one could be in the form of process or whole antigen. Then you add your anti-human globulin label with the fluorescence. Again, the activity of that is directly proportional. The more or the higher the activity of the fluorescent, so that's positive the result is. Okay, so we consider here the patient to be positive for the Lyme disease if the titer is 1 is to 2, 5, 6. So however here the incidence of other infections like in the case of Borrelia recurrentes, uh, Treponema denticula, or Pallidum, so it will give a false positive result. Then finally, we have here your enzyme immunoassay. So you are also detecting here for the antibody on the serum of the patient and your antigen here is on the slide. That could be in the form of the following. Pwede siyang crude sonicate antigen, recombinant, synthetic, or purified na antigen. Then you have your anti-human globin labeled with the enzyme. Then increased activity of the enzyme is directly proportional to your result of your sample here. And try to read that one using your special photometer with a color change to consider as positive for the Lyme disease. Okay, so that's all about your spirochet infections. And so this, um, we could also have your Western blood, you could also have the PCR, DNA probe. So these are confirmatory because those are molecular tests. Okay, thank you.